fit and then hopefully if uh, people that couldn't make it, we, they can watch it back. So, yeah, lovely to, to meet you this afternoon. I'm Pete Waddingham, Program Manager here at the Auction Humber HSN. And, uh, yeah, hopefully uh, we won't keep too much of your time. This should be lasting uh, and finished due, uh, at quarter to three. As a way as uh, a bit of a plan of action, we're going to give you a very brief overview of, of the national, regional, regional and local cardiovascular resources that are available to support PCNs with CBD management. Uh, we want to obviously explain a little bit about how we as an HSN can help you, uh, but also some of the uh, other support services out there like the community pharmacy. We're going to focus on three areas. We're going to touch on hypertension, including the National BP Optimization Programme. We're going to talk to you a little bit about cholesterol and lipids, including FH. Uh, and then finally, I'm going to briefly speak about diabetes, but only a very small subset of diabetes, which is the use of a drug called an SGLT2 inhibitor. Um, as I, it says at the bottom there, you don't have to worry about remembering any of this. Um, you know, the only thing you really need to remember is just how to contact us. Um, so whilst we're going to throw a lot of information at you, uh, it's probably not everything we could throw at you. Um, but yeah, as I said, don't don't worry about remembering any of it. Just just please how to contact us. And and actually, as I said, this is the third webinar that we've done um in, in in this month and actually they've been really fruitful and i've made some brilliant contacts with pcns and that's what we're looking to do today so if you can um put your uh you know the name of the pcn that you're from in the chat um, and also we're going to put share some details in a minute um, so just a bit about why us and who we are. Well, we've been commissioned nationally over the past few years, actually, to do work on, on cardiovascular, cardiovascular disease, so both nationally and locally. So to give you a few examples of them, I helped deliver the West Yorkshire Healthy Hearts Programme, which some of you may have heard of. We've also been commissioned in the past to deliver a national uh, projects around AF. So um, I don't know if people can remember, we um, we had a little uh, a live core device, a two-lead ECG, and we looked at uh, DOAX and uh, increasing prevalence of AF and getting them uh, treated with with a DOAC um, and then since that work yeah as I said we're going to be talking to you a little bit about the national BP optimization program some work around lipids and in glycerin and FH etc etc so just very quickly in terms of who the HSN are made up of we've got Jenny Hamer who's just come back from maternity leave she's the program uh, come back from maternity leave she's the program lead uh, myself I'm the program manager uh, and I lead on West Yorkshire so anyone that's on the call from West Yorkshire please reach out to me We've got James Bowman on the line. He leads for Humber Curston Vale. And James is going to be talking to you in a minute. Uh, so, yeah, please reach out to James if you're from Humber Curston Vale. Uh, Ruth, who I can see on the call as well, she's looking after South Yorkshire. So, again, reach out to Ruth. Nick, who again is on the call, uh, she's a program manager and is leading on in Clisseran. And, and Nick's going to be talking today. And we've got Graham and, and Sarah who help support the project through project support and through comms. Um, just a bit about Healthy Hearts, the work that I deliver on um, and lead on. Uh, we have three areas, as I've mentioned already, hypertension, which is about increasing prevalence, you know, finding those patients uh, that are hiding in plain sight, actually, those that are on GP systems that might not be on hypertension registers, uh, but also, most importantly, we want to get their BP optimised, you know, it's okay finding these patients, but actually we need to optimise their management. Um, cholesterol was a very distinct piece of work around um, identifying those uh, I, say people rather than patients, I'd say those people who have got a future cardiovascular risk of a heart attack and stroke uh, and get them on treatment. And then we did a piece of work and we're still doing a piece of work around statin optimization. So switching their statins, if it's not working, onto a high intensity statin. Since the, when we did that work, there's been a lot of work on uh, the national lipid profile and the use of some other drugs, which we're going to touch on today. So our work with Healthy Hearts was very distinct on statins, but since then it's grown to include other parts of the lipid pathway. And as I said, there's a final piece of the jigsaw for us in healthy hearts around diabetes and the use of an SGLT2 inhibitor. I'll give you a very quick flavour in a bit of all of those three. Uh, and as I said, I'm rattling through quite quickly because, uh, yeah, we, we, we've got a lot to tell you about. Um, we have got a website. Some of you might have been on there already. It's a brilliant website. We're really proud of it in terms of it's got information for both patients and professionals. It's always changing. We've tried to make it, make it accessible, i.e. in different languages through Browse Aloud, through leaflets that we create in Easy Read, in other languages, etc., etc. In terms of today, though, obviously what's important is that there's information on there for professionals. So the things that I talked to you about today, you will find on our website. So the treatment guidance that I'll go through, the searches, etc. Uh, have a look on our website, but like I'll, you know, uh, mention again throughout this uh, webinar today uh, just reach out to me if if you're in West Yorkshire or reach out to me anyway really and we'll we'll signpost you so if you struggle to find something just just contact us 
And um, obviously we're trying to show that this is linked, this work with lots of national levers. So there was some money that came out last year called the Investment and Impact Fund that was uh, due to help uh, with the hypertension case finding back in October. It got delayed slightly just because of the co uh, vaccination rollout, but it's, it's due to start again. And then there's lots of other areas that it covers, like the um, FH, heart failure, uh, and some work on cholesterol uh, and statins. There's also a requirement to use CBD intelligence tools. I'm going to talk to you very briefly about some of the data that we've got at our disposal. And again, you know, we're here to help really. Uh, we're here to help you um, find out where the patients might be, the quantity, the scale of opportunity, et cetera, et cetera. So, so data was part of that national spec. And, and as I said, we're, we're here to offer some thoughts and guidance. <clears throat> Uh, in terms of hypertension, we created some very simple um, treatment guidance for uncomplicated hypertension. And um, I'm not clinical, so I'm not going to go into too much clinical detail here, but effectively we chose the drug or we recommended the use of amlodipine as a first line drug, followed by indapamide if it wasn't controlling the blood pressure, followed by lasartan and then spironolactone. Um, uh, that was just to try and alleviate some pressures in primary care. So amlodipine doesn't need a blood test, um, uh, but it's evidence based for treating blood pressure. We've just had the new NICE guidance re-released actually on treatment management of uh, hypertension, and you will see a lot of similarities in, in the NICE guidance uh, and our treatment guidance, which again, we like to take a little bit of pride thinking that we were ahead of the curve uh, with that. Uh, NICE also did a lot of work around just simplifying the BP targets because there was actually quite a lot of BP targets out there. So have a look at our uh, treatment guidance is on our website. Do have a look at the NICE treatment guidance as well. Um, and, and ultimately, hopefully it provides some, some really good evidence based way of getting people's blood pressure under control. Lots of information for patients, I'll say, including videos, et cetera, that you can signpost patients to. Um, yeah, on our professional pages, you know, with these leaflets and um, information around services that I'm going to touch on in a minute to do with community pharmacy. There's, there's information about where the searches are that you can run, which I'll touch on in a minute. So lots and lots of information. Oops, I'll just go back a slide, sorry. I'm um, really proud of some of the impact that we've had today. To be honest with you, that was impacted on by COVID, as you can imagine, but we've managed to find an additional 90,000 patients added to hypertension registers since we started this project a few years ago. Um, we've now got uh, 15,000 additional patients receiving treatment. Uh, unfortunately, at the moment, what we've realised is that COVID has had a big impact on people's blood pressure readings. So there's a, you know, a need to get people's BP readings in the last 12 months, and those slipped a bit, obviously, because of COVID and because of pressures in primary care and the vaccine. Uh, and, and it's you know Im imperative that we get those BP readings. And I'm going to touch on that and some p potential ways to, to help. Um, because without that, we don't know whether people's blood pressure is controlled. But we know that 15,000 more people are having treatment, uh, and that's great. We've managed to switch almost 10,000 patients who were on a low intensity statin and whose cholesterol wasn't tr controlled onto a high intensity statin. I think I've got it in this slide actually, but um, our ratio for high intensity statins is really good in West Yorkshire. Bradford are the highest because I think a lot of this work, well, this work did stem from Bradford actually. So you can see that in the data. And um, we've started putting people on a statin who were at high. CBD risk, uh, but obviously there's lots more work to go on. We're hoping now is the time to reignite this work. Um, yeah, as I said, we've got some clinical searches. Um, I can help you uh, get them, run them, have a look at the numbers. Um, you know, just just um, uh, yeah, try and familiarise yourself with the searches. They definitely work. I mean, I've sat down with GPs in the past and they've run these searches and gone, yeah, actually these patients should have been hypertensive coded and they've, they've tasked the nurse to just get um get them a, a BP reading and, and just find out and get them confirmed diagnosis. So yeah, we've got some searches that hopefully can help you. We've also got a dashboard, uh, not a performance management dashboard by any means. It's just a way to point us in the direction of where the opportunities might be. So we can see that data at um, a regional level, a CCG level, a PCN and a practice. And, uh, and part of the offer that we do is to sit down with you and have a look at some of that data. So I've just done that this week with a PCN from Leeds. Uh, yeah, just trying to help uh, hone in where where might the biggest opportunity might be and, and not only that what is the most priority for the PCM because we know that you can't do everything at once so hopefully data just allows us to to point you in that direction and um, this was a graph I mean I'd say we can we can do work for you behind the scenes because uh, this wasn't part of the dashboard but it was starting to become evident that there was people that hadn't had a BP reading in the last 12 months so we've got data that just helps point us in the direction and um, I'll skip through that slide but um you know I think actually the the 
the purpose of that was we try and sort of use a rate per thousand just to even out, you know, because if not, we end up having that Leeds looks like it's the worst CG, CCG just because it's the biggest or a PCN looks bad just because, again, it's got a large population. So we, we try and even out through a, an average. As I said, um, high intensity statins, Bradford, you know, top of the, um, the, 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 the list here in Yorkshire for their ratio of 80 percent. And actually a lot of our West Yorkshire um, uh, CCGs are above that national target of 66 percent. Um, so whilst it's great to be above the national target, we know that, well, why couldn't we all get to 80 like Bradford? You know, there's learning there to be had. And a lot of that is through the Healthy Hearts work. There's some digital tools as well. Obviously, again, we know that you can't do this on your own. So AccuRx has been commissioned again for another year in West Yorkshire and Harrogate. Uh, a really beneficial tool and um, it's been going down well with practices uh, it can help collect four day and seven day readings so you can send a patient a questionnaire you can configure the messages uh, for example linking it to our website potentially or linking it to community pharmacy which i'll talk to you about in a minute it's got a couple of downsides in terms of it doesn't do bulk messaging or the, um, or the system that's been commissioned doesn't do bulk messaging i think the actual platform does and um, but as i said i've heard a lot of good comments about it so really it's just kind of you know making sure that you are maximizing products like AccuRx or similarly we know that um, TPP system one has a product where people can submit blood pressure readings and they can be pushed back into the system approved by a clinician before they put in the system so you know what we're trying to do here is just get you to think have you thought about your digital approach to this work because we know there's lots of numbers TPP and AMID there's a lot of automation that can be built in so you know are the things that you can automate to make your life simpler and um, so hopefully we can promote that conversation with you and that thinking. Um, a, a really big shout out to the role of community pharmacy. I think many of you might know that they were commissioned to deliver a hypertension case finding service that was due to go live in October. Um, obviously, again, like primary care, it got slightly delayed because of the vaccine rollout. Really beneficial service um, that can help both those undiagnosed hypertensive um, uh, patients, but also those that need a BP reading and haven't had one in the last 12 months. So please do use that service. Before you can use that service, you do need to establish the links with the local PCN rep and we can help facilitate that conversation. We've got brilliant contacts certainly here in West Yorkshire and we've got contacts across other parts of the system. Um, so yeah, it's not a case of just sending them straight away. You know, we do need to just have a couple of conversations and link a few people up, but absolutely, absolutely maximise it for both those patients that have not got hypertension or those that are on your register uh, and may need a BP reading. They've also got some other brilliant services like the new medicine service. And as I said on our website, we've got lots of leaflets uh, about what that service is about, just so that you can really maximise it in primary care. So if anyone is newly diagnosed, whether it be hypertension or the work we're going to do on diabetes in, in um, uh, healthy hearts, it's ideal for those patients, those new drugs like the SGLT2 inhibitors, where a patient might just need a little bit of more TLC to understand what is that drug, you know, what are the side effects, how is it going to benefit me, you know, and the new medicine service is ideal for that, as well as looking at obviously other drugs that the patient might be on. And um, there's obviously the home blood pressure uh, monitoring service. I don't know if many of you on the call have, uh, uh, we're, we're lucky to get some BP machines sent your way into practice, but as I said, do maximise them. And um, the search tools can help you find the patients that might be suitable for those BP machines. And as I said, there's there's hopefully some work around the digital that helps you get the readings into the system that you that you're going to need. Uh, but really good to empower patients to to take blood pressure readings. Uh, in terms of cholesterol and lipids, uh, same sort of thing. You know, we've got a treatment pathway that I'll touch on in a minute, some clinical searches, lots of letters. I mean, I did a big piece of work. I was just telling someone earlier on around Leeds, actually, where we engage with patients about, you know, what would it be like if you got this letter sent to you or text to you by your GP? Does it make sense? And we shaped it with them. We got it developed in easy read because we know not everyone's got, you know, a high you know, um, le level of health literacy. So we've got some easy read leaflets. Uh, but yeah, please do have a look at those results says use them as you see fit tweak them if you need to etc etc so our lipid pathway what we developed when we first started healthy hearts as i said was very much focused on on the uh, statin drugs so we've got both primary prevention there um, i'm not going to go into too much detail today because i'm not clinical and as i said it's it's on our website for you to, to look at your own leisure we, we did a lot of work around statin intolerance as well so just some guidance around statin intolerance because sometimes patients say they're statin intolerant and it's it's trying to just challenge that uh, we've got some videos by dr rani Kati, for example on our website that can help you as clinicians just think about statin intolerance and help patients as well since we did that work there's some new drugs have been recommended on a national pathway so the use of azetamibe and benbidoic acid 
and then also the Inclisaran and PCSK9s. I won't speak too much about them because I know Nick's going to um, talk about Inclisaran in a bit more detail, but you know there are other drugs out there that can help people's uh, cholesterol reduction and uh, services out there, specialist services for PCSK9s, etc. Uh, so we just want people to try and maximise that that lipid pathway for patients' benefit. Um, I want to touch on this. We, you know, there are other products out there um, like Optimize RX that some of you might be familiar with. So we're just working with that company to make sure our treatment pathway aligns with with the the product that's currently out there. And they've got some others. In terms of diabetes, again, you know, it's on our website, um, but it's very much around the use of the SGLT2 inhibitor drug, uh, which is called Good Cardiovascular Reducing Benefits. We're about to, um, uh, well, we've got some guidance out there. There's, as I said, there's some clinical searches to find the patients that we think might be suitable for that drug. So those where their HbA1c isn't controlled and they're on numerous other um, diabetes drugs. So, um, and, and we've got some clinicians that can come out and speak to you about that work and, and, and just hopefully help um, uh, give you a flavour of, 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 of why we're doing that piece of work. Um, just a, a really brief sort of um, uh, mention of uh, another piece of work that I was involved in that's all interlinked really. We, we did a piece of work around healthy IO and the chronic kidney disease uh, testing service. So the use of the smartphone to scan your urine that could tell you if you had an ob abnormal ACR levels, which is a precursor to chronic kidney disease. We know people with hypertension, um, cholesterol can, you know, can lead to uh, chronic kidney disease. So there are some tests still left. If you're not aware of that service, you want to find out a bit more, again, use me in the first instance, I can signpost. Uh, and yeah, we've had some really good impact so far um, in, in terms of that test. I think we've got 155 practices onboarded across the region, uh, about 20,000 tests already being completed. I'll hand over to James now, so thank you, and then I'll come back in a bit. Lovely, thanks, Pete. Uh, I'm James, I'm one of the programme managers, as Pete's mentioned, I look after the Humber Coast and Vale ICS region. Um, I just want to briefly mention about the BP optimization programme that's running nationally. Do you want to move on, please, Pete? Uh, launched back in January of this year and runs until the end of March 23. It's in partnership with NHSX um, and we've been commissioned by NHS England to look and support um, primary care networks, improve blood pressure optimization, look at um, active case finding, and then reduce health inequalities across um, each of, of the primary care networks. So really they're looking at um, improved blood pressure outcomes, reduce broader cardiovascular disease risks, especially with lipid management, and then the overall reduction of heart attack strokes and cases of vascular dementia. What what it means for, for each of the primary care networks and the practices, we've, we would like to work with as many primary care networks across the region as possible um, to help you improve and support that, that need to identify those patients that have their BPs poorly controlled or active case finding as as the various schemes are and there's a number of tools that are available so you've got the west yorkshire healthy hearts as pete's already mentioned and there's also um various tools and videos and help guides from uclp partners who's one of our sister ahsn's that have got a hypertensive proactive care framework um with that it not only looks at what you can do for the patient, but it also gives you um, ideas and workarounds with how to utilise and deal with your workforce differently. Um, just a quick slide that shows, you know, what the hypertension framework looks like and how you can manage um, the workload around it. So stratification and prioritisation of those patients you know, with poorly controlled blood pressure that go into a clinician and those that are in priority in three and four that are generally managed, how you can manage those with uh, different members of the workforce, whether it be with a healthcare assistant or a health coach or referring back to the community pharmacy. It's all, all about different ways and means that you can link that up across um, each of the practices. Um, for the BP optimization program, we've got a, an active metrics to try and help and support at least 62 of the primary care networks across the region. Um, 
please, you know, reach out to us, speak to us, and myself, Ruth, or Pete will gladly, you know, point you in the right direction and help and support you through, you know, trying to optimise the blood pressures as part of this national programme. Um, what have we learned so far today? We know hypertension management is in a crowded space. It's for, it's there alongside all the other disease, disease, long-term conditions and diseases that are out there. You know, are you able to pull resources where appropriately? Use of community hubs, referring to community pharmacy, use of health coaches um, and lifestyle coaches that may be out there. Um, I don't, you know, we've got, um some data there that identifies struggling practices you know and we're keen to talk to those those practices as well we're also empathetic in in, in around your capacity issues and obviously this this then gives you that opportunity to reinvent yourself innovate the use of various digital tools technologies that may be available or other resources there um or even the use of drop-in clinics we found that have been out there that have been really useful. Just quickly skip through those. Some of the the primary care networks that we've identified as being in the top 20% of deprivation, but we know that looks different when you look at it on a local level. Next, um, I'm also working with Home Coast of LRCS, as I mentioned. Um, with the local CVD prevention and detection group. We're looking at trying to replicate what West Yorkshire have done with their Healthy Hearts scheme. We know that um, Humber Coast and Mail have got a Healthy Hearts web page up and running already, and there's some good links there. But ideally, I'd like to come out and speak to as many practices and PCNs that have got good practice across the region, find out what you're doing, pick that up, and then see what learnings we can use and spread that across the Humber Coast and Vale region. And also at the same time, you know, look at how we implement the blood pressure optimization program and also uh, the FH and lipids programs. Ruth, I do believe that's on to you. Hi, uh, just to say hi, I'm Ruth Pittman-Jones and I have oversight of what's happening in South Yorkshire. I think most people on the call are from West Yorkshire, uh, but if you have any colleagues in the South Yorkshire patch that you think might be interested in uh, hearing more about what we're doing and the support that we can offer, um, please do link me with them. Um, I, I'm also working on the BP optimization program and the FH and lipids management pathway. So, and that's all I have to say. Thank you. Right, and uh, on to myself about Inclizaran. So I'm Nick Verk, has been touched upon, and I'm leading on Inclizaran implementation across all of Yorkshire. Um, can go to the next slide, please, Pete. OK, so, so Inclizaran is, is quite a new drug, and it's 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 quite exciting. I think what would be really important would be to just step back and look at how we're approaching the um, in implementation of Inclizaran. So it's, this is a national HSN programme, and there's 15 HSNs. Um, and we're looking at a population health approach to bring it in in Clizaran across our region. So it's an LDL lowering drug, but it acts very differently. So it's an SIRNA um, medication, um, which means it, it, it sort of acts differently and it's structured differently to a lot of other medications that we see. It almost structurally looks more like a, a double helix, and that's due to the nature of how the drug interacts in the body. Um, it's really interesting drug to be a part of. And it's a really excited approach for our primary care networks to be able to take to bring this in. It just gives another additional uh, sort of point for our um, patients to be able to be getting the medicines that they need that maybe do slip through the net a little bit. We have really good pathways and we've got really good drugs in there. So this is just a great addition for all the patients that sort of don't quite meet targets for getting um, PCSK9 inhibitors uh, and that, that sort of grey area in between. And those grey areas in between are really important for us to address and because they're the people that may be at higher risk of an extended cardiac event. So it's primary care and secondary care initiated, uh, secondary care through a blue tech form, primary care just through your standard FP forms. Um, 
and it costs £45. That has a reimbursement value of 55 It must be ordered through AAH. So if you don't have a profile with them, then uh, I'd recommend going to the website. It's a really simple process. Um, it's given by a preloaded injection. It's very simple. Um, just mostly into the abdomen is the ideal route, but obviously the thigh um, and upper arm if, if necessary. Um, next slide. So as we touched on, it lowers LDL cholesterol in adults. And we're not using it at the moment in children. Um, and there's three studies. There's actually now four studies out. There's one that's um, an ongoing study that's called Orion 4 that has 15,000 patients enrolled in it. And there's some really interesting findings from it. So in Clizaran on, on standard, it lowers LDL by 50%, which is significant in those grey area patients that we need to get down to about 1.8 LDL um, in, as part of the long term plan achievements um, over the next few years. So implementation is is really key and it's actually really quite simple um, once the capacity and, um, and the headspace is available to think about it. Um, findings from the studies suggest there's no no adverse uh, sort of drug drug reactions, which is really quite interesting. Um, obviously, it's an injection, so it's not another tablet burden. Um, so it's a nice addition for people to have in there as a combination therapy. So we're part of this process to implement um, and our, our process is to, to work with people on the ground with PCN level, uh, with CCGs and with ICSs and secondary care to make sure that this happens in a way that's suitable for our region. Um, our ICSs obviously act quite differently. And um, so we've implemented the AAC national guidance um, and looked at the, way, the ways that we can do this best across each of those ICSs. And um, there's lots of local pathways that are either in situ and being approved at the moment or that have gone live. Um, so there's been a lot of movement in the past month. Um, like we say, it closed around, it just addresses a gap where the LIPI pathway didn't know what to do with patients. So, and it was no fault of, of, of anyone who's just sort of the drugs available. So even when people are on the highest dose thresholds, they just weren't getting those outcomes, but they still didn't sort of meet the criteria for referral to secondary care. And um, this is where it comes in and where it can significantly re reduce that, that LDL. Next slide. Um, so yeah, we're, we're the honest broker. I'm here to support you basically to make sure that this is implemented uh, really, really well. And what Pete touched upon earlier, um, with Bradford on, on our demographics chart. It does make sense to me because Bradford are really engaged with this project. Um, so it's, it's, it's learning where our learnings are coming from and being able to help implement this elsewhere. So it's almost it's almost like giving a B12 injection. It's, it's very simple and it's quite a rewarding process for clinicians to do from our feedback um, in that you can you, you administer on day zero. It's administered on uh, after three months and then it's six monthly thereafter. So that's really great for patients as an option. Um, but from a, from a clinician point of view, that means that you can align up um, bloods um, and get levels back to patients uh, when they come in for their next administration, um, which which is just it's just game changer because the, the patient buy in is key. Um, as we all know, and patient, patient activation is really important. And um, so that's that's where we go with that um, searching for patients. It, just through system one and EMIS. Again, there's, there are, like Pete said, there's lots of lots of places that are, have got search tools and sort of bolt-ons, but somewhere I'd recommend looking at is, um, is Arden's. Um, so I'll pop the link of that in the, in the chat in a moment. Um, and they, they have templates and it's not just for Inclizoran, it's for all areas, but they do have an Inclizoran search built in so that you can just pop it onto your patients and it will search for them within 10 seconds find them and then you can rerun it whenever you deem it's appropriate and it's quite interesting different places different approaches and um, obviously if it's a more rural community and um, that your, your patients and your staff capacity are different so sort of run by clinicians and their PAs um, to, to then then have uh, PSDs um, initiated for patients to be able to have it as from the pharmacist administered uh, from pharmacy technicians to administer so it's really interesting on how we can look at this um, those tools to identify those patients like I say they're really key um, and what is also quite important to bring up is its storage so it doesn't have any special storage conditions it doesn't need to be kept in a fridge it's not doesn't come in a massive box um, and it can be ordered really simply from the AAH so that's that's it from me lovely I'll just I'll just Oh, I've got a bit of an echo. I'll just touch quickly on FH uh, and uh, in terms of um, 
the support that's on offer. So there are actually four FH specialist nurses across the region that can help go into practices to, to carry out some searches. I mean, obviously you've heard a lot today about clinical searches in the daytime. It is important because as I said, it's a very busy space out there. And, uh, you know, it, if that's an area that you'd like to focus on, uh, we've got some data on potential FH patients. And as I said, I, I think those are a great asset to you. So, so please let us, um, foster that relationship if it's of use to you. I think James you're a good conduit for that we've got your details on the next slide there in terms of the FH work because um, there's also a child parent screening program that uh, that has a point of care test through through Abbott and one of our HSN colleagues are leading on that um, and uh, yeah there's a subsidized cost of £750 after that that trial duration of that project and uh, practices can get paid three pound for each child tested so obviously fh child parent screening um you know these are all important pieces of the jigsaw the cardiovascular jigsaw so uh, yeah please do reach out to us and just some final messages from me actually we're doing pretty good for time i must have rattled through really quickly on my section because i know last time we um uh, we, we finished bang on time but you know I, I think just some final reflections there, there's lots we probably would want to talk to you about but we're really acutely aware that we didn't want to bombard so um i think the first message is do not struggle alone as we keep saying just reach out for us for further support and guidance we've all put our names in the chat we can follow up with you after this webinar um, you know, let, let the information sort of digest a little bit, reach out to us. There is lots happening and there's always some kind of change. So please do follow us on social media. Healthy Hearts have got a social media presence. I think I'll put it on the next slide, actually. If not, if Sarah's on the line, if someone could just put our social media Twitter handle in, in the in the chat, that would be appreciated. And, and as I said, we've got our website for Healthy Hearts that we'll put in the chat and uh, circulate here. I think, again, the key message is, is start simple. You know, it feels like the searches and the data are a good place to start because, as I said, they help you point in the direction of what might be the most pressing um, part of the pathway for, for you in primary care. And as I said, we know that you can't do everything at once. Have a look at the treatment guidance that we've created for, uh, for the three areas. You know, become familiar with it. It's not mandatory. You know, it's just kind of guidance. Um, and uh, obviously, clinical discretion can always be made, as can and should be shared decision making with the patient. But do have a look at those treatment guidance. Uh, and yeah, uh, decide which area of focus and consider how digital might help that. I think there's some brilliant digital tools. There are actually some other ones I'll give you a quick flavour of in a minute. Uh, celebrate success along the way. I think that's massively important. Um, you know, there's lots of uh, people ma under massive pressure when it was COVID and then we've got other global um, issues going on. And uh, I think we always need to step back and just celebrate success. I was speaking to a GP the other day, as I said, they ran the search. I think they ended up finding about 10 patients that had been missed. I mean, the the impact that that would have on those people and their families, you know, I don't think we can underestimate. So whilst it might only sound like 10 to those family and friends um, and to the people herself, it's massively important. And every number helps because if every practice PCN can find a few, treat a few, get the blood pressure readings in a few, it all adds up. So and as I said, we want to help celebrate success. And um, there is um, a requirement, I think, under the CBD specification just to have one CBD rep for each PCN. So we'd love to kind of connect with who that might be in your PCN if you've had a chance to kind of think that through. Uh, there's lots of other parts of the CBD pathway. Certainly in, in my role, I get to, to wear a couple of different hats, but there's this there's tech around using the cameras, camera phone to, to measure blood pressure. That's getting almost CE marked soon. There's this work around automation, as I briefly touched on, uh, with with products like TPP and System One and lots of others, so how can we automate some of these processes so that we don't have to try and deal with the the, the massive uh, amounts um, that we've got? Lots of work on remote monitoring, and as we said, there's there's different search tools out there that can help people. Um, so I think that's it from me. Um, sadly, I've left my glasses at home today, so I can't actually read the chat. Um, uh, I'm getting to that age where that, that I need my glasses to look at that. So I won't put anyone on the spot, but just be rest assured that we will look through the chat. I can see lots of people have been posting things. Uh, really appreciate your time. And uh, yeah, please, please reach out to us if you've um, uh, if you'd like some help and uh, we can get to them conversations and uh, hope, hopefully help you on your CBD journey. So thanks for your time uh, and enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you, everyone.